Hello, folks. Brandon Chapman with you today. It's another Monday video from Theo Trade. Uh, for August, uh, what, uh, 28, 2023, uh, markets higher uh, on Chinese stocks surging as option activity explodes. Is this the time to look to fade? Maybe not today, but is this week? Is there going to be a good setup to fade the rally to the downside? We're going to look at that as well as a lot of option activity in the Chinese stock space and other companies that, uh, again, we're looking at this kind of little rally off the lows this week. Do we get it? Well, if we look at today just by itself, right, we're continuing the rally we saw from on Friday. Um, we've yet to actually take out the high from Thursday. So we're still within the body or within the range of last Thursday's candle. And so we could actually come in and we can draw some lines across the high and low and we can see areas of significance. And the fact of the matter is, I mean, the couple day rally we're seeing is has not yet in two days made back the loss from last Wednesday's rally <clears throat> uh, going into the decline on Thursday and Friday's support and today's bounce uh, closing up above the high of the low day from Friday. So certainly we're having some near to momentum, higher highs and higher lows versus Friday's candle. But what does this really mean? I mean, are we really setting up for the next phase higher or are we just setting up for another opportunity to short the market and to benefit from the downside? So as we look at the yes, we're going to look at the VIX today. So the VIX, you know, it's a decent amount of selling. The VIX end up at 15, close to the support level over the last few weeks at around 15, 14 and three quarters. Um, we'll see whether we can break down to the lows from June and July. I think that's a tall order given, given the position that we're in right now with economic data training the way it was. I, I think I think Jackson Hole comments from, from uh, Chairman Powell certainly indicates, look, they're erring on the side of more tightness than looseness, but they are so-called data dependent. But when has the Fed ever seen a recession coming? The answer is, of course, never, right? So softening data aside, you know, their concerns are still inflation-oriented in terms of interest rate policy. Not exactly, they're not concerned about inflation caused by their ancillary programs to help support the financial system. So while they're running over people in the front, they're kicking out cash in the back. And so again, this isn't exactly the best uh, mixture if you're trying to <clears throat> trying to tame inflation. But we know that they're they're kind of dependent on that. They were certainly more hawkish in the statement last week. And so as we look at the broader S and P, we we'll look at the SPY here. Again, we have the range. Um, again, we're, we're just coming off of lows. And as we look at the leadership, you'll notice communications is in here. Well, what two stocks are in communications? The sector is up 1.22 percent, and yet we look at uh, Google. We'll just throw the L on it here. It's up 0.87, actually lagging the sector. We look at Meta. Again, another top holding, 1.67% uh, topping the sector, but not by a lot. And this is a more volatile stock than many of these other companies. Verizon Communications up minimally. But then we got Charter. Charter Communications exploded at 3.65%. This is in the top five holdings of XLC. That's ah, the sixth, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's the sixth top holding at four and a half percent. And so you kind of get a sense of, well, well, where is the strength? Is it with the more standard um, communication stocks like, you know, Comcast, T-Mobile, Verizon, um, or is it with Google and Meta? The answer is, is not really any of them, right? There was a bigger move in charter today that I think helped maybe disproportionately lift. But in general, this sector did rise today. Uh, but again, disproportionately movement in charter. But then if you look, for example, at Netflix and NFLX, up 0.49%. And Disney today, Disney was up about 0.96%. So two stocks that saw significant option activity in Disney and Google really did not, you know, they really did not outperform this sector as a whole. We have industrials, real estate. Well, real estate's up nicely today. And yet what, if we look at uh, TNX, 10-year treasury yields were actually, what, slightly down in the session. Nothing material. And utilities brought up the tailpipe here, you know, brought, brought the end, the caboose, at basically just flat on the session. And so I've been expecting to see yields kind of pull back. I've been expecting to see XLU probably show some leadership. And we're kicking off this week by not really experiencing that. Uh, so, again, where are we going right now, Right. We're not seeing kind of the typical leadership if we're steering into recession with 
staples and utilities really showing significant leadership. But at the same time, you know, technology has been kind of falling by the wayside a little bit, kind of led by NVIDIA, right? And NVIDIA, you know, did rally off the low, did finish up 1.78% today, but NVIDIA is the same price as it was, for example, on July 14th. So we really have gotten no appreciation out of, out of NVIDIA for a month and a half. And technology generally over the last three weeks has been down 1%. In the last six weeks has been down 4.5%. We look at the last six weeks, what's been outperforming? It's been energy. And of course, we have some bullish option activity in Oxy we'll talk about today. So again, it's kind of a mixed bag, right? Confusing bag to figure out, well, is the market likely going to go higher? If we look at oil prices, oil prices were marginally higher in the session. But if you look at the product curve, notice this red line. This is the current uh, uh, um, uh, term structure graph here, product depth. Notice prices are falling. This is bullish. We're in backwardation. Not quite as steep as where we were on August 1st, but it still shows the risk to the upside right now is the energy. So if you're looking in one area, energy is one of those places to consider. Um, healthcare in the last six weeks has done relatively well. But relatively well means it's up, what, 2%, not exactly showing tremendous leadership. So as we look at the broader market, we have to say, look, I mean, there is there are real risks to the downside here, right? That this bear market, uh, or at least the most bearish run more recently, is probably not done. And there's places you can look from a volatility standpoint, VIX, 3M plus VIX, right? We're looking at the ratio of three month to one month VIX. And if we bring up a ratio, this is the pairs ratio uh, study. Um, if I, we just look at the yellow graph here, right? This is ticking up the last couple of days. We're at about 1.13. I mean, if we get another rally, another day or two rally, we could readily see this get back north of 1.2 because this can adjust relatively quickly. So if we rally, we're only likely setting up the bearish scenario to the downside again. As back month volatility, three month VIX starts to rise against the one month VIX. Again, north of 1.2, this is an area that's generally pretty unstable for the broader markets. Uh, we don't have the skew index for today. We can look at where we finished on Friday, but I doubt we've come in much today at all. We're still north of 130. So, again, while hedging activities diminished a little bit with the selling, there's still a relatively high degree of hedging and skew in the broader market. Back month volatility is still relatively elevated. And if we get any sort of rally and drop in the VIX, I would expect with the drop in the VIX, skew should rise today. Any further decline in the VIX in a market rally is only going to reset the downside. So I think as we look at this stuff, and we're going to talk about a few potential opportunities on the bullish side, but recognize, look, this is likely resetting for another opportunity. Whether we get a rally throughout the week or not, companies like Google, maybe this isn't the one you're shorting. But companies like Morgan Stanley that have bullish option activity, if we get a rally out of this, this could be a nice short opportunity. So do you take the bullish trade off the lows or do you wait for that bearish trade to set up this week? So I think we do have to be careful of getting over our skis if the market does rally this week and trying to put too much into it on the bullish side because any rally is probably going to get a reset hedging activity and VIX term structure, et cetera it's only going to set it up even more solidly on the downside. So look for maybe some bullish opportunities in the next few days, but watch for that rally leading into overbought conditions and likely likely a market correction heading into or pullback heading in the next week or two. So again, look for that opportunity probably to go bearish on the rally as we watch the VIX head lower possibly, see the back month, three month VIX rise relatively compared to the 30-day VIX, see skew rise, and that may set up the downside once more. And if you, uh, so if we do get a rally, it could be an opportunity if you've not kind of reallocated with more of a bear market structure, you may at that stage look to really look to do that. So as we look at Google today, um, Google, L, you know, the vote, we're talking about the voting shares, uh, you know, as you look at Google today, I mean, there was, you know, again, a little bit of flurry activity, uh, more filled at the ask than the bid. But with big stocks like this, you expect to see a little bit of balance ultimately. But in the 29 SEP expiration, um, you know, uh, we're seeing on the call side, uh, 141 and 142, a lot of buy side long call activity out here. So if we translate this to the chart, 141, 142 is a bit up here. And so while I think that's probably a little bit high in terms of expectations for 32 days out, 
if the market were to break out, if the Google were to break out here, that could be a reasonable uh, potential target for it. But there's opportunity probably to go a little bit lower in strike price, you know, like buying like a 132 and selling a 134 for 32 days out, targeting something a little bit closer. And therefore, you don't need it to go to 140. You know, just breaking through 134 a little ways with 32 days to expiration would allow you to get out of that uh, at a reasonable profit. So, you know, you look at kind of a 132, 134, cost you about a buck uh, on a $2 spread. Again, not not terribly priced in that circumstance, 32, day, Tuesday, 32 days out for Google. So if you, again, if you don't have a lot of bullish positions on, this would be one to think about as an opportunity to add some positive delta if we do rally this week. But again, keep it a little more limited, right? Because again, there is a lot of uncertainty that this that's going on right now that could really change the dynamic, okay? Um, let's look at another one here. So uh, let's look at Oxy. So we talked about energy. Um, energy is a space it could see a little bit of a rebound, right? The structure of oil is pretty good. Oxy today. We did gap lower last week. We formed a nice little hammer formation. We didn't take out the low the next day. Today, we're actually closing above the high, looking to fill the gap, maybe rallying towards 65, maybe 66. And I realize we have this whole BRICS discussion, right? This whole notion that people are trying to diverse away from the diversify away from the U.S. economy. Is it attractive to an oil producer like Saudi Arabia? Well, yeah. I mean, our state objective is that we're going to get rid of we're going to get rid of um, uh, petroleum products, right? Natural gas, all that stuff, right? We want to go towards uh, a so-called greener future of higher cost, less efficient energy, right? Sources. Uh, but again, that aside, if you're Saudi Arabia, you're looking for partners to be able to ship your products to. And therefore, dollar as a reserve currency, reliant upon these massive trade deficits where we buy Saudi oil, we send them dollars, that has created and, and led to Saudi Arabia pegging to the dollar in the past and other countries like China exporting goods to us, we sending them dollars. Um, again, that stuff, you know, it, it's compromised. Not that the dollar's reserve currency is going to completely go away tomorrow, but there is risk here, right? And so, but, but at least for the time being, again, production cuts with OPEC um, certainly has created, you know, a scenario, the strategic petroleum reserve they've added, not a lot, but a little bit may help oil prices remain relatively res relatively resilient. Uh, of course, Oxy is a, is a holding by Warren Buffett. But if you notice, it's for this week, the one SEP right here at the 63 strike. Now, um, Oxy, a you know, reasonable choice here. Again, could you look at, you know, this thing maybe get into 64? You know, could you look at the possibility, maybe not four days out, maybe 32 could you buy a 62 and sell a 63, buy a 62, sell a 64? Um, you could put that on for less than a buck. Uh, maybe you stretch it out 53 days, a little more depth in here, a little tighter spreads. 60, 62, 50, that's eh, a little bit in the money here. 62, 50, 65, that may cost you about a buck 08, buck 05 on a 250 spread. You have a buck 50 of upside 65s here. So there is opportunity to consider some upside spreads here, despite the skew is going against you just a little bit. Or do you go with integrated names like Exxon, for example, right? It caught a nice bid today up nearly 0.84%. Do you expect maybe, you know, Exxon to maybe retest prior highs or Chevron, which has lagged a little bit here as well, retesting prior highs at 164? There's opportunity to consider these kinds of spreads, just looking for a little near-term pop towards recent highs, in this case, 165 you know, we got five dollar spreads here, 160, 165 pricings. Eh, it's just okay, right? Because we do have falling volatilities. We move out of the money, and so this is kind of the question. I mean, do you jump on board Chinese stocks, which really let out today, right? If we look at KWAB, if we look at emerging markets, uh, again, Chinese companies outperform like Brazilian companies, for example, the B in BRICS. Um, it was really kind of a leader today, up 2.87 percent in KWAB. So the question is, do you jump on board here or do you wait for the bearish setup? Um, again, Chinese stimulus, they keep trying to pump the market. And yes, they've been successful at times. And then you get these really, like, really sharp drops, like, for example, on the second. We tried to get a rally here. We had a big drop on the 11th, for example. 
Uh, we had a nice gap up and then we saw three days it get it ripped lower and then rallied again. But here we had a nice rally and we saw it drop. And so it's really difficult right now, again, to take the upside because the reversals are so fast and furious at time. KWeb today, we saw an October expiration in here, uh, rolling down a call from 35 to 30, some calls bought at 32. I'm certainly kind of saying, look, you know, 32 gets you back to prior highs. 30 is about a 61% retracement. This is potentially on the table due to the amount of movement we've seen over the last several weeks, particularly in the decline. So could you look at the upside opportunity here? And the vol structure is somewhat favorable, right? 53 days out, could you buy a 31 and sell a 32 or buy a 30 and sell a 32? Buy a 29 and sell a 31, right? So you can construct an upside call spread up into this range, maybe even drop into 29, and you're going to have a low cost, high reward, low risk trade. You know, maybe that's worthwhile. If you don't have a lot bullish on, if the market rallies, it's probably going to be uh, uh, in part due to some of the positives in terms of stimulus coming from China, yielding to positives in uh, Chinese stocks. And you saw a lot of breadth to this today, right? You saw a lot of breadth with like BABA, for example. BABA got bid 2.69% higher. Uh, BABA was an eight SEP expiration here. Uh, we're buying, they're buying the uh, 100 strike price. Again, where does 100 align with? It aligns with recent highs. So here's the second stock in the Chinese space here that are kind of aligned with their July highs. Uh, JDCom, right? So we look at JD. You know, we have our prior highs back here around 39 to 40. Well, we come in, we look at, at JD. This one's a little bit different in that it's a September expiration, selling puts and buying calls at 34.50. So this wasn't buying a call outright. This is more of a synthetic. But again, could we get a move to, let's say, for example, 36 to 38? Yes. Okay. And JD, at ASHR. So we got uh, um, har the harvest, again, coming off lows here. Dry your fibs. Oops, sorry. Dry your, oh, come on. So coming down here, we'll go to uh, uh, fib retracements from high to low. Could we get a move to 27 to maybe 27.50, 26.50 to 27.50? Again, it's entirely possible that that could be the result in the coming next week or two. As we look at ASHR, this is a 29 SEP expiration. It's out here a little, a few weeks. That's a 2750 strike, right? So where's 2750? It's towards this 61% retracement, giving us kind of a near-term target. And again, you stay 32 days out. Could you construct an out-of-the-money call spread? Well, you could buy a 27, maybe sell a 28. You know, the vol is falling in here. It's kind of flattish. Could you buy a 2650, sell a 2750? Well, similar vol cost about 41 cents on a $1 spread and 27.50 is right about here. So the pricing is just okay, right? And, and that's the problem is that a lot of this stuff, the pricing's just okay to really start to try to play the upside. So do you play the upside or do you wait for the bearish, the bearish setup to materialize? So again, I think there's opportunity, particularly in KWeb, to look to take a bullish swing if you're looking for something. Google, for example, Exxon or Chevron, for example, but again, recognize that, you know, where we're at right now, Disney's another one, right? Well oversold. We had that big sell off last Thursday. We're bouncing back the last couple of days. We're only standing at about the midpoint of the bot, the candle body from the 24th. Again, this is a projected air resistance and yet communications up today. One of the leaders uh, or the leader in the space. And if we look at uh, Disney on the one set, this is for this week's expiration a lot of buying on the 85 strikes. So again, do we create some gamma at 85? We start to break through it and push. Well, it's a real possibility, right? So we look at Diz. I mean, could we get to 86.50 to 88.50? Well, if we start to take out 85 and push quickly tomorrow, you'd have to target 88, you know, 88.73. Is there potential going back to 92? Yeah, that might be a little bit long in the tooth, but we could get some near-term push, maybe back towards that 88.50, 89 area. And uh, in the near term. So again, can you create the spreads that are possible that can capitalize on that? And you'll see the, vo the falling volatility out here makes it more difficult. But as you get towards 87 to 89, it levels off and makes it more viable. Now, maybe like an 86, for example, 88. Well, where does that align with our, our kind of our projections here? An 86 to 88 
could be reasonable 32 days out looking for a bit of a rally here. Uh, and that spread costs you at about, you know, what about uh, uh, 69 cents for a $2 wide spread risk 69 to make a buck 31. That's not terrible from a reward risk perspective, looking at kind of that, that testing that 88 level, maybe pushing through it a little bit. So you can kind of see that the task here that we have is that there's just not a lot, right. To, to take on the upside. You have stuff like MetLife today, though, that has held up relatively well. We're seeing a nice little kind of bounce back the last few days. We're at about a one-third retracement of the down move. If we break down, we could readily go to 58 and a half. So this is one that, while it's been bullish, it's performed relatively well compared to the market. Um, this is looking like that we could break lower towards that 58 and a half area, maybe even further towards 55. Well, if we look at MetLife today, again, you can kind of see where this is going. Um, this is out there. It's a December 2025 here, but um, it's kind of interesting, right? They're taking this rally, and here they're buying the 6250, selling the 50. So, so money flow taking the downside prospect of this retesting our lows at 50. But if we just look at the money flow aspect of it, um, this could be a reasonable kind of in-out spread candidate 32 days out, not a lot of depth here, probably going towards the 53 day expiration. But could you buy a 6250 and sell a 60? May cost you 85 cents on a 250 spread, not terrible. And 60s right here. And you got 30 something days for it to test 60 or maybe a little bit below. So again, this is one that's already seen the bounce. And again, may provide an opportunity to take a downside swing and maybe an upside swing in Google if you want to kind of balance it out just a little bit. Um, we'll finish out with a couple of stocks here in ConAgra, so CAG. Uh, this is a consumer non-cyclical company, right? We're very, very oversold. If we look at the expected move, uh, boy, you know, we've, we've really, you know, you know, the last few weeks we closed below the expected move. Uh, that's two, oh, sorry, closed below two times the expected move. The prior week we touched the expected move, that's in blue, touched the one times the expected move there to the downside. Close below two times the expected move. Close below two times the expected move. And now we're kind of hanging out here. So this is a very extreme move to the downside. Not too dissimilar from Met, oh, sorry, not Met, but uh, not too dissimilar from uh, a stock like MS that had some bullish option activity today, but even more oversold. And it's a defensive company. And it, it pays a little bit of a dividend here, about 4.62%. I say a little bit. That's a little higher than I thought, thought but again, you get a nice dividend at 35 cents, stocks down a lot. We look at kind of the 10 year, we're, we're kind of around the lowest price we've seen since uh, early 2020. And so I'm not, I'm not saying, look, go out and buy the stock for the dividend, although it may be a possibility. What I'm saying is this might be an opportunity where if the market starts to falter, consumer staples, and particularly an overstock like this could see some near term strength. And so Conagra, this is for a uh, step one, so short-term oriented, 4,000 contracts here. Um, again, catching a near-term bid off of support. So could you go out uh, 53 days? You know, could you buy a 30 and sell a 32, right? You know, it costs you about 95 cents. You're close to your break-even. Oh, sorry, you're, you're a little off your break-even on this one. Uh, break even's closer to 31, 32's here. Um, but again, it, it is kind of interesting at this level um, and the, it's just the skew is a little bit unfavorable to be able to do it, but this could be a nice stock trade too. Just looking for the price to get towards 31 and a half, maybe $32 in the near term, just as even a stock trade in the case of ConAgra XRT here's retail, right? We've got shrinkage, bunch of companies announcing how theft is really hitting them hard. We draw the fib retracements here. We're at about a 50% retracement. Um, and we're kind of, this is that initial downswing, very little, virtually no support at all from the peak up here. So a big, big move. So we look at this, we can measure the retracements to the upside. If we start to get towards 64 or maybe even setting up something now in case we break early, um, XRT, what we saw today as far as option activity, this is out there a little ways for December. And they're just saying, look, I think it's going to go down by December, buying the 60, selling the 55 here. And you look at 55, we're essentially saying, look, we're back to 2023 lows uh, from September by December's expiration. That seems like a pretty, if you're kind of laying it out there for a few months, it seems like a pretty reasonable trade to consider if you have a bearish bias. Finally, we'll finish up with Pfizer's 
uh, talks of buying, you know, enough doses of vaccine for the entire country. Kind of crazy thought after all the data that's come out. But again, you know, government, there's a lot of self-interest there, right? There's a lot of political leanings that lead to this stuff. Pfizer's been grinding it out. They've had their earnings already. And today what you're seeing is a couple of uh, bullish trades for the one September expiration buying the 3650s mostly and also the 8 September. So a couple weeks out here on the 3650s as well. So what we're seeing is a little bit of, uh, of gamma level being provided about 3650. So I probably watched to see if we can kind of take out the highs of the last few days. And this could create an opportunity to start to play the upside either as a stock. There may be an option trade in there as well. But man, if we start to reverse, 40 bucks could be in, tar uh, in view, maybe even higher if, uh, if we see more traction as far as uh, getting, you know, buying uh, the doses of vaccine and, and that sort of thing. They may help reverse this trend, at least in the near term. 40 bucks seems like a pretty reasonable target at about a 10% move. Well, folks, got to wrap it up there. We'll catch you back next week on the video. Hope you have a great week. Hope this gives you some guidance as to what to watch for. And, uh, and again, look for that bearish fade opportunity this year, this week. I think it's going to be set up that way if we do get a rally for a lot of stocks. Anyway, thank you.